At isang napakaganda at pinagpalang araw na naman sa inyong lahat. Ano po? Welcome to another live episode ng Lighthouse Cafe Talk Show. At ngayong gabing ito, ngayong araw na ito pala, ang ating pong uh, topic ay ang mga kabataan. Ano po? Kabataan na kinakailangang maabot natin sa kalagitnaan ng pandemya, sa kalagitnaan ng mga social na mga challenges. Mm -hmm pati distancing at cancellation. Tama, <laughs> Bishop. Actually, napaka-challenging po itong uh, pandemya. No? Ito nakaraang, well, two years po no? running itong pandemic. Pero marami po actually ng mga churches na hindi tumigil sa pag-reach out sa ating mga kabataan. At sa gabi pong ito ay makakwentuhan natin na representatives from Awana Philippines. Sa Espresso Self naman po ay pag-uusapan natin, Bishop, ang online mm -hmm. safety for children. At kasama po natin dyan ng Honor 1000 Movement Inc. And of course, in Health Talks, Kidney Health and Care naman with our resident nephrologist, Dr. Aika Isidro. So maraya po kaming hinanda ngayong gabing ito. So join us, wag po kayong maglilipat ng channel at samahan niyo po kami sa magandang talakayan. Ngayong gabi, ako po si Ressa Abante Yebra. At ako naman si Bishop Ruben Abante. Join us and let's have good talk over good coffee. Welcome to the Lighthouse, Lighthouse Cafe. Cafe. Ayan, Reza, no? Palagay ko, maraming matutuwa sa ating pag-uusapan sa gabi nito, mm -hmm. no? Sapagkat uh, medyo malawak ang ating usapin mm -hmm. kasama ang uh, tungkol sa well, yung buong well-being yes. ng tao lalo na ng mga bata, spiritual lalo na. Mm -hmm. Oo. And tonight, we are so glad to have with us. This is a very good opportunity for us to to have the representatives ng Awana Philippines. Ang unang-una dyan, si Pastor Noy Anat. And he is not actually new to us. Yes, ilang, ilang beses, beses na, na po natin so siya okay nakapanayam na dito, dito sa Lighthouse no. Cafe. And the other one naman, ito, Pilipino ito, pero maputi. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Matt Wolf. At siya ay ang gumagawa ng mga content for mm. Awana na ibinibigay sa mga churches. No, Welcome to you both to Welcome our Lighthouse po. Cafe Magandang Talk Show. Magandang araw po sa Oh, yes. Oh, Pastor Noy, how are you? Mabuting mabuti po. Masaya that oh. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Matt, you've been here in the Philippines for how long? 13 years. Ganun na katagal? At nagtatagalog na rin po siya. Nagtatagalog. <laughs> ah. Superpower ko po yan, but don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you have your family. You're here as a missionary oh, and you're pastoring a church. Yes po. Our church is there in Kandaba, Pampanga, uh, Bahay Pare Bible Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two kids, uh, Liam and Luke, and my wife, Rina. Oh, that's good. But then you partnered with Awana and you're providing content also for Awana. Up, um, during the pandemic, uh, there was a big problem with children's ministries. They're locked down now. So yes. Awana, they have that passion for reaching boys and girls with yes. the gospel. Uh -huh. So, paano po uh, ipagpapatuloy ang outreach nila mm -hmm. when everything is locked down? So they develop a curriculum that is designed to be brought dun po sa loob ng bahay for the parents to teach mm. the kids. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the ways that they thought would also be good is to have this visually uh, represented yes. through the, the, the media TV. and TV. Oh. So we were able to partner yeah. with we'll, Awana Philippines. We'll go back uh, to Matt for that topic. Pero kumustahin natin ang Awana. Pastor Noy, you're the main representative for Awana here in the Philippines. Are you um. not? For now, I'm overseeing Awana Southeast Asia now. That's a bigger because, yeah, area. Yeah, because I have passed on the torch already to our new national director. Okay. Yeah. You so, Awana Southeast Asia, po anong covered niyan, Pastor? We hope to cover all the 11 countries, but right now we are in seven of these countries. Mm. But yeah. siguro tell us, uh, Awana, ano bang ibig sabihin? But, Maawa, maawa ka o awana? Awana, awana. galing po yan sa 2 Timothy 2.15. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. So doon ako yan, rightly dividing the word of truth. A, a approved workmen are not ashamed. 
Oh yes. A W A N A. Awana. So oh. diyan po yung hinango ni Art Rohan yung pangalan na yan sa 2 Timothy 2:15. Magaling wow. ano? Yeah. Ilang so, taon na po yan dito sa Pilipinas, Pastor? Dito sa Pilipinas, we are on our 37th year. Magano ka yeah. nakatanda o oh, kabata? <laughs> uh, nagsimula po ako. Dahil tayo po ba si Pastor Noel? <laughs> <laughs> nagsimula yeah. po ako makapal pa ang buhok ko. <laughs> uh, and uh, Pastor Matthew is a living testimony of this ministry. Kasi si Pastor Matthew, nung bata pa, uh, nag-aawa na siya sa Amerika. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yun. Kaya nga ganun niya kamahal itong ministry. Na yeah. Awana itself no does uh, content no. Mm-hmm. Pagkatapos you partner with churches so that these content mm-hmm. or modules may be taught sa mga Sunday school, ano pa, mga eskwelahan nila mm-hmm. no. So Outreaches. your main partners are churches. Uh, churches, uh, other ministries, Christian NGOs, mm. orphanages. Yes and uh, community centers we do partner with them and we provide them yung uh, bible based curriculum okay and then yeah. you just simply train yung mga uh, teachers mag-handle nila mag-handle nito mag-handle yeah. na ito mm-hmm. ito pong curriculum na to uh, pastor complete po to no? like they also, they also have materials for kids mga libro tama po ba other than the yeah lessons. we we have curriculums na nagsisimula sa ages Two. Mm. Okay? Hanggang, hanggang 18 actually. Eh. So, kung yayakapin lang ng church ang program na ito, mm-hmm. hindi na sila problema doon sa discipleship ng kanilang At children. Progressive pa, tuloy-tuloy. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Oh, oh. Well, that's wow. good. Uh-huh. So, you're talking about easy 10 years, 16 years of discipleship sa mga mm. kabataan. How about the setting? Meron bang setting for Filipinos ang awana ng mga modules? Actually, kung uh, alam ng marami yung awana sa Amerika, mm. ibang-iba po yung pagdala oh. ng awana dito sa Pilipinas. Mm. Okay. So, we have adapted to the communities, the culture ng uh, Pilipinas para magiging relevant and effective din siya. Yeah. So, customized po bali sa mga Filipino uh, mga problems, issues mm-hmm. ng mga kabataan. Mm-hmm. And even your language po, is it also yeah. translated? To we Filipino? have translated the material mm-hmm. into three other major dialects. Mm-hmm. So, Tagalog, uh, Bisaya or Cebuano, mm-hmm. and Hiligaynon, okay. which is Ilongo. So, Yung po, naka-translate yan. And then, uh, we call this uh, parent guide, a wanna parent mm-hmm. guide, na kung saan, online, pwede kukunin ng churches ang mga lessons na ito mm-hmm. at i-distribute doon sa mga bahay ng mga kabataan kasi hindi makalabas sa mga kabataan ng Tama. pandemic. No? Or the parents themselves could download it or print it or mm-hmm. discuss it sa mga anak nila doon sa loob ng tahanan. Abay, maganda. Oh. Yeah. Maganda. Yeah. And uh, mag-i-increase pa kayo ng mga iba't ibang dialects like Ilo- Ilocano maybe, uh, uh, Bicolano, di ba? Yeah, we're hoping na the scope of this talagang lalawak, lalaki. Mm-hmm. At uh, yun nga, I was mentioning ng Southeast Asia, this has been translated into Lao, which is Laos. This has been translated into Cambodian, uh, Burmese, Myanmar. Mm-hmm. And now ongoing, we're translating it into Indonesian, wow. Bahasa. And you are spearheading yung spread yeah, yeah. sa Asia. Naku, malaking yeah. trabaho malaki. yan, Pastor Noy. Malaki. Yeah. By... Pero masaya naman. Baba. Oh. Magbabawasan ka pa ng... <laughs> <laughs> now... Yung challenge ng Awana when the pandemic came. Mm. Uh, slowly, nagkaroon kayo ng online, nag-conversion kayo. Mm. Kasi wala nang physical. Hindi makalabas yung mga, yeah. mga bata. Doon pumasok sila, Pastor Matt. Yeah. Oo. Ang gustong-gusto ko naman dito sa kanila, yung, 
yung naunawaan nila yung sitwasyon ng pandemic na yung mga bata hindi makalabas. Yes. And they were so ready nung uh, kinausap namin sila at nag-partner kami na nag-create sila ng mga TV episodes which we are TV showing oh. every week mm-hmm. sa isang cable channel mm-hmm. na ginagamit namin. May kailangan, meron din sa GCTV. And soon on GCTV soon. din po. Mga next month siguro, <laughs> meron na tayo <laughs> dito. Pero actually, very challenging po kasi even in GCTV, ito po sa Lighthouse po, we're also producing yung mga munting ilaw. Napakahirap po actually, lalo yung mga bata. Ha- Gano'n po ka-challenging to translate into actual shows po itong mga awana curriculum? It's it's been a challenge, but uh, mm-hmm. nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon dahil sa talented and faithful members ng church mm-hmm. who are really willing to put yeah. their whole heart. And they're from your church, those of Pampanga. Oh, lahat mm-hmm. po lahat. Mga, wow. Uh, actors, actresses, editors, <laughs> lahat. Production. Yeah, yeah. production oh. from from oh. start to finish. So mm-hmm. that's as a pastor, that's I think even a greater blessing to see the people. Yeah active mm. in service even mm. though there are challenges like the pandemic but yet mm. tuloy tuloy sa gawain at wala rin pong background to, no? i'm sure in production pa- paano niyo po sinimulan how did you start so for me uh, i'm thankful sa home church ko sa us mm. uh, i have a little bit of training sa tv ministry nila doon mm. but uh, one of my hobbies is photography so i so think the lord mm. has given given me some type of insight with that and mm. uh, some of it is trial and error and mm. sana po from season 1 hanggang sa season 4 we have improved so that's our goal to keep growing keep improving um, mm. but uh, they say teamwork makes the dream work so we have a great team of course team. Yeah. yeah and uh, ang, you you develop from the modules itself and then uh, anong anong ginawa niyo uh, so that it can be palatable sa video no sa uh, television what changes did you input there? We, we tried to make it fun and exciting for the kids. And the oh. uh, isa sa mga benefits ng show is we tried to film outside, outdoors. Okay. Um, so mm. especially when everyone is locked down mm-hmm. sa loob ng bahay. Ang safar, may nakita nga po yes. safar. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> thankfully naman, we are near the Kandaba Swamp. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's a bird sanctuary area. Ayan, no, nakikita oh. nila yan, no? Mm. Ayun. Oh, oh. Yeah, so maganda po talaga ang scenery. Uh, near the church and we oh. are grateful that uh, the Lord has blessed mm-hmm. us and we can showcase the natural beauty but more than that syempre yung power ng salita ng Diyos so we try to make it engaging mm-hmm. uh, try to have uh, creative segments so we take that curriculum that Awana developed uh, called uh, Living God Story which mm-hmm. is basically ano po, parang creation to Christ approach yes. and then so maganda po yung flow ng story mm-hmm. it builds on each week, each lesson, yeah. and then how can we use that in, in a fun way to teach the Bible? So intact yung mga modules mismo? Apo. You, you mm-hmm. just added para, uh, added a few more para maging ano sa television? Yes, yes po. And online? Yes. Well, that's good. Eh, alam mo, Pastor Noy, I think it's really time na maging open tayo mga mana ng palataya mm, to the mm, many mm. opportunities because yeah. we have tools. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Our mm. television is a tool. Mm. <laughs> you know? uh, ito mga, uh-huh. ito, nandito tayo. Mm. Eh, kahit kami, this started out as a one church ministry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No? And then, uh, ang tinuturo ko, uh, lahat tayo mayroong kaloob ng Panginoon. We, we all have gifts mm. from the Lord. And for whatever field we're in, mm-hmm. you know, Biyaya ng Panginoon yun eh. So, mm-hmm. that ought to be used for His glory. Yeah. Oh, hindi ba? Kung technical ka, then have a technical platform ng ministry. You said photography. Abay, marami tayong content na uh-huh. pwedeng idagdag dyan. Hindi ba, Pastor Noy? Naihanda talaga si Pastor Matthew before coming to the Philippines. Yeah. No, For such a time mm-hmm. as this na pandemic and he was able to step up. Kahit yung mga script writers nila eh, yeah. from the rough, pero I mean, talagang nag-step up. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I believe, meron din mga challenges because wala naman perfection the first time. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> but you develop along the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The thing is, if you don't start, you don't develop. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Keep isa, improving. That's true. Even isa pa pong challenge would be to be really consistent with the content. No? Kasi sometimes, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you've also experienced it po, parang 
sometimes no naubusan ng ideas mm-hmm. or you know something new to make the show uh, more engaging to kids how do you deal with those problems uh, we try to get a group of young people together who are filled with energy mm-hmm. and uh, medyo fresh naman ang idea yeah. memory bank nila they're you know really they're really creative uh, mm-hmm. you see this um, the young people love to express themselves so why not try to harness that mm-hmm. creative energy mm-hmm. And use it para sa Panginoon. And so, yes, there are times when you know you need to refresh, rest, mm-hmm. relax to allow those creativities mm-hmm. to re- re- rejuvenate themselves and flow again. But um, thankfully, God has provided for us. One of the wonderful things we're trying to do is every episode uh, we have the opportunity to share the the, the message mm-hmm. of hope in Christ mm-hmm. uh, specifically. But we try to do it in unique ways. I know uh, we are familiar maybe with a wordless book mm-hmm. or yeah. iba method, but every episode we try a, a different creative approach to tell the same old story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but we are thankful for the team that God has entrusted to us. Uh, but, of uh, course, on television, you also provide no, in itself, siguro, yung mga videos to churches. Tam- ginagawa niyo pa rin ba yun? Uh, hindi lang yung modules na tinuturo Ito, uh, we post it online, so yeah. it's in YouTube, it's in Facebook. So if this particular church was not able to view it last Saturday, mm-hmm. they can pull it down from there. Oh, Ayun, so mababalikan nila at uh, madudugtong nila kung anong na miss nila na episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is not only seen here sa Pilipinas kundi sa ibang bansa mm-hmm. kahit doon sa Middle East some of the Filipino families there yes. are, are watching this yeah, yeah. Oh. kasi it's on social media po yeah. right? so uh-huh. it's open to anyone actually you should have an awana for OFWs mm-hmm. pwede pwede you know, you uh-huh. know why eh, pwede. I visited some families no, sa Europe sa Italy for example uh-huh. marami mga uh, workers doon and they they go there by families na yeah. mm-hmm. okay unlike sa middle east naiiwan yung family dito pero in italy for example pamilya pamilya na yun ng mga nag doon so nandoon na nag-aanak yung mga anak nila nagkakaapo na sila doon doon na nag-aasawa and one thing they pick up on yung ugali no yung custom ng mga mm-hmm. ibang yeah. bansa uh-huh. yung mga bata nga hindi na marunong magtagalog eh Okay, Italiano na ang salita mm-hmm. nila. Nawawala na yung behavior actually ng mga mga uh, Pilipino. Uh, kultura mga natin. Mga kultura yeah. natin. You know. And they long to have some modules actually which their uh-huh. churches actually cannot provide. Yeah. You know, kaya, kaya magandang opportunity. Uh-huh. Pasok mo, ipalagay ko an OFW. Yeah. OFW kids to be reached out by content coming from mm-hmm. ano. And especially addressing yung mga challenges ng mga uh, OFWs. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Alam mo, I, I think uh, we can partner on that. Eh. In, in fact, yeah. eh, marami, uh-huh. din, marami din aabot ang uh, facilities namin na ito because we're not just on television, we're not just on GCTV, but mm-hmm. we're on social media platforms as well. But of course, we have uh-huh. the help of some others yeah. ng mga uh-huh. NGOs and mm-hmm. uh, church-based na mga ministries that yeah. you are also uh-huh. in. Uh-huh. No? Awana is basically uh, from U.S., ano? Opo, opo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It and, started in the U.S., yeah. Yeah. And you worked initially with uh, what churches? Dito. Dito, we are in many uh, Baptist churches, evangelicals, mm-hmm. and uh, even yung mga full gospel yeah. Yeah. So uh, some of them even uh, were able to check their doctrines, oh. having adopted uh, mm-hmm. the Awana program. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So nako correct din yung mm-hmm. theology ng iba. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Ako, I grew up with the flannel type board ng mga stories. Oh, you know? oh, oh, oh. Ako din po. Oh. <laughs> Naabutan ko pa yon. Hindi ni dikit pa yon. Pagkatapos pag sira na yung flannel. <laughs> I know, ginagamit namin, ginagawa mga t-shirt. <laughs> Pero, Awana is very traditional sa mga churches, ano? 
uh, what anong mga bagong mga modes para to get into high tech thing no meron na bang mga awana modules and tablets or <laughs> ganon ang um, uh, yun nga yung living god story curriculum namin yung uh, uh, parent guide mm. yun nasa ano yun nasa online yan so kaya nga pwede nilang i-download doon pwede i-print and uh, we're still uh, coming up with new ideas ang uh, isang tinitingnan namin ngayon is an app a gospel app wow. how to share the gospel we we used to have that sa US pero ibabalik siguro namin paano mag-share ng gospel using an app oh. that's good yeah. at saka mismo yung parents ang nagtuturo mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know sometimes uh, pastor Matt the the challenge eh yung mga magulang no sa mga churches dadalhin lang sa klase yung bata mm. tapos sasabihin sa stands you Iwan teach lang. my child oh, oh. <laughs> and so they would be very detached mm. no sa upbringing spiritually ng bata mm. but the awana provides no and mm-hmm. in eh, anong tawag diyan connection. connection connection we have awana games which is mm. really unique sa awana hindi wow. mo mahanapan tong <laughs> mga laro na to sa ibang uh, grupo o yeah, ng na, ano, Awana um, yun. And we have an Awana game book na yeah. masusundan nila yung mga laro. Are you doon. planning to have an Awana Minecraft? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Bakit hindi? Mobile no? gaming. Ay, oh. parang ganyan, no, Bishop. Oh, yan, no? Nakita yeah, po nila yeah. sa ano. Oh, wow. ah, maganda. Oh, so, right. so, very ano, physical din po yung ano. No? Bata, oh. matanda, nag enjoy sila dyan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And these are all provided for free po, the curriculum, how, how, especially yung access po online. Ang access online, uh, yes, we have provided it for free. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also a membership mm-hmm. sa mga churches na are using Awana mm-hmm. to, to help the ministry mm-hmm. to continue. So, may maliit okay. lang na membership fee. Membership. Maliit lang. Okay. Maliit lang. How about the modules? Do they buy the modules? They uh, could print it, mm-hmm. download it, no? Mm-hmm. So, kasama na doon sa membership nila. Ah, okay. Uh-huh. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kasi so soft yeah. copy, eh. Uh-huh. So, if ever po they want to, you know, uh, get in touch with you or they want to access ito pong ano, saan po sila pupunta na website or social media page? We have our Awana Filipinas uh, Facebook page, uh-huh. okay, Awana. and they can go there. Mm-hmm. And we also have our own uh, uh, Awana site, okay, mm-hmm. and uh, they can go there and and check kung ano ang maitulong ng Awana sa kanila. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's okay. good. And and do you often go around? Ah, okay, pero meron ka ng isang gumagawa niyan for the Philippines yeah, for the Philippines, Awana Philippines. Uh-huh. Oo, oh. nagsimula na naman tayo mag mag ano eh mag uh, unti na naman tayo na. lumalabas, yes. no? Mm-hmm. And uh, churches are getting aware of it now. Yes. So medyo dumadami na and uh, we have had a series of training already with mm-hmm. with some churches. Mm-hmm. Actually si Rene, one of our missionaries have expressed na ang Bicol ay nagaantay para yes. para ma-train. And uh, next month, uh, we will be going to uh, Jensen mm-hmm. because it's opening there already and soon we will be training the the churches there. Yeah. Alam mo, sa pandemic na ito, talaga ang naiwan mga bata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know, kawawa po. naman oh. sila. Mm-hmm. Eh, they're left out, no? Uh, by themselves. Wala nga silang ginagawa kundi mag computer games, hawak-hawak lang yung mga gadgets. Ano, mga gadgets nila, tahimik pero malayo na. And one of the burdens na we had why we created this kasi marami sa mga churches nung boom pandemic hindi alam kung paano mag-adjust. Right. Yes. At naiwan walang Sunday school. So kawawa mm. talaga. Tama po kayo. Kawawa talaga yung mga bata. Mm. Pwede namang Saturday school. <laughs> marami po, marami oh. ang marami ang nagsa-Saturday school. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, eh, nung araw nga, I still remember when we were kids, we we would go out to communities, to barangays, we would gather children, yeah, yeah. and yeah. we would have good news classes. Uh-huh. 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 And we would be bringing uh-huh. programs. Uh-huh. No? 
Hindi lang yung mga flannel board uh -huh. stories. Gagawa kami ng mga activities. Uh -huh. Yung baga, in, yung interactive. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, yun ang ginawa ninyo, Matt, sa... Uh, Doon sa Kandaba, they have Kandaba. how many... So, during the, before the pandemic, uh, we would bring all the children sa church mismo po and we yes. would have that Awana circle. Mm -hmm. But we have to adjust. Mm -hmm. So instead of bringing the children to the church, we sent out Awana teams to the children in their communities at barangays. So we have around 8 to 10 different Awana communities uh, there in Kandava po. And uh, every week we are reaching several hundred kids uh, with that program. Mm -hmm. So, uh, siyempre, yung pinaka-favorite nila is the games. They yes. love the Awana games. And th they get so excited, and then you teach them the Word of God, mm -hmm. and you can explain to them the good news and hope that is found in Christ. What if there would be churches also, pastors who would be interested in doing what you do, but in other places? Uh, would, they, would you open to that? Uh, share with them the, what, what you do? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we, we believe in, in the mission of Awana, mm -hmm. which is simple, uh, reaching boys and girls with mm -hmm. the gospel of Christ mm -hmm. and training them to serve Him. Mm -hmm. And that's a great commission vision and mission. So we would be more than happy to uh, okay. anyone who would love to on pastors. know more. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. Awana yeah. is very open to extending yeah. the ministry to your churches. Oh, pero siyempre, the pastors need to open up no? and uh, they need to be aware of what Awana can offer. They That's should uh, wake up no? to the importance <laughs> of yes. reaching the next generation. Uh -oh. And as I would, I would always say it, sabi ko, no? pag uh, inabot mo yung mga bata, mm -hmm. hindi mamamatay yung church mo. Mm -hmm. Oh, tama. Mm -hmm. Kasi may sunod na na generasyon. Mm -hmm. Diyan namang gagaling yung sunod mo na pastor, mm -hmm. leaders mo sa church because you have been discipling mm -hmm. them since they were very At young. pag hindi natin ginawa yung pwede natin gawin ngayon, mm -hmm. no, hindi tayo naging proactive, hindi tayo naging creative, you know, hindi naman natin tinatawaran na, you know, hindi natin binabaliwala ang katotohanan. It's still there. The foundational mm -hmm. thing should be there. Mm -hmm. Pero, eh, you use tools ngayon, you be creative. Be Pag creative, hindi natin yeah. ginawa yan, others will get them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, we lose the opportunity. Yeah. And we lose lives. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, ba? so, uh Awana is open to... Have you also began to meet pastors and groups, maybe conf, uh, be in conference? Is there an Awana conference? We have what we call the 414 Forum. Mm-hmm. Uh, bucket 414 because the age 4 to 14 it's the most fertile time uh, yeah. to sow the gospel mm -hmm. that children would respond so there's about 85 percent of that the children mm -hmm. would respond to the gospel so mm -hmm. in 414 forum we gathered the church leaders the pastors and cast the vision to them yeah meron na, vision casting there is this uh, group, age group, mm -hmm. na kailangan nating abutin okay. na kung saan it's very rich, very fertile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are pastors who would mm -hmm. respond to it. There are pastors na uh, would catch the vision. And they are the ones that we would train mm -hmm. and pass on the technology of Awana to them. That's great. Yeah. Pero alam mo, yung capability ng mga bata ngayon gets younger ah, yeah. and younger. Yeah. Yeah. Totoo po. Oo. Oh, oh. Oh. Yung nagagawa nung araw ng mga five years old, dalawang taon na gumagawa ngayon no. eh. Oh, eh. Especially with gadgets po sa online yes. news. Yeah. Ano, Baka like, kinakal, 360 na lang. Parang yeah. jack 360. <laughs> Kaya, pabata na pabata. Oh. Pabata ng pabata. You know. Wow. I, I guess kayo, uh, Pastor Matt, you, the, the group no, that does yung ano nyo would be young people. Yes, uh, high school, college students. Wow. Opo. And that's one of the other advantages of the pandemic is mm -hmm. many of the students, they are having more free time mm -hmm. because their schedules are greatly adjusted due to the different restrictions of face-to-face -face classes. Mm -hmm. So 
the Lord also allowed them to have that time to gather together and help with filming. Um, but we, we pray that uh, whether it's an in-person Awana club or kahit sa, sa online. online LGS, we call it Living God Story Program, that the Lord would use that in a powerful way to really touch the heart of, of the children, pati po ang kanila mga magulang. And we're praying that the Lord will raise up a, a generation that will, will turn the world upside down for Him. And uh, we don't know what God can do with it, but we know na uh, ang ating Panginoon is uh, so powerful, nothing's too hard I've, for Him. I've always thought this. We, we do not lack mm -hmm. no, sa mga materials for the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even values, for example. Mm -hmm. Pati ito. Only thing is we need to you know, get young people realize that the Lord has given them much gifts, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. Mga abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to be good stewards and faithful yeah. stewards. Mm -hmm. Yun lang naman yun eh. Mm -hmm. And if churches will really be proactive, mm -hmm. eh kaso minsan yung mga leaders mismo, wala na. Wala na tayo pag <laughs> nito. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes they have to step out of the mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. no? Step, step out, the, step out of the way. Step out. <laughs> <laughs> baka step aside muna. <laughs> or baka i-promote na rin sila. Oh. Um, into other ministries. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Well, pero it's a good thing. Maganda yung in-open up na ang Asia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing about the Philippines, yeah. you know. That's a, that's a big mission. I mean, it's, there's a vast mission field out there. Like Indonesia being mm. the biggest, yes, archipelago, yeah. yeah. and uh, in all of these countries, there's less than ten or five percent. In some countries, even less than one percent believers. Mm. Mm. In all of these countries in Southeast Asia, mm. ang Pilipinas lang ang medyo malaki, Branch. may Christian mm. base. Mm. So, abay, maraming, what, what, next start ka na sa, pag, ano, sa Asia. Next start na po. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, last week, nandito po yung uh, uh, three countries, Indonesia, Cambodia, and uh, Vietnam. Wow. And uh, we had training in Tagaytay. Mm -hmm. And now they're back and are excited to reach mm -hmm. their, their country. Ah, so right. they're coming, they came here po. Yeah. Well, congratulations yeah. to Awana uh -huh. uh, for doing that. You know, mabilis yung oras natin eh. Pero, oh, wow. pero yeah. I think they can also leave Yes, Pastor Noy, why, why don't you talk to our viewers? There might be pastors, their church leaders uh -huh. na uh, nag naghahanap lang, no? This might yeah. be an opportunity for you. Please. Sa ating mga pastor na nanonood dyan at ating mga uh, churches, Awana Philippines is here to help you. So, visit our website or our uh, Facebook page. Tingnan po ninyo kung paano pa namin kayo matulungan sa inyong children ministry and uh, help your children ministry grow as well. So, sabi ko nga, isang pagpapatunay ng isang bata pag inabot mo sa murang edad ay magiging katulad ni Pastor Matthew. Mm. Can you say something example, to them? Uh, oh. I'm, I'm a product of Awana, <laughs> and I'm so thankful for the impact it's had in my life. And uh, I praise the Lord for the opportunity He's given me and our church to bring mm -hmm. uh, the hope of Christ through Awana in, in Kandaba and throughout the Philippines. Well, praise Amen. God. Oh, thank you for being with us. And don't forget, ano po, we might have the Awana, what do you call that? Awana TV. Show? Yeah. Living God's story. Oh, living God's living story. God's story. Oh. Uh, Here in GCTV, TV huh? Yes, okay. Wow. Like next month. So, um, we'll look forward to yeah. that so that we can deliver and help churches as well. You know, get young people and children to get to know Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. Salamat. Pag moving na ito, no? uh, Pastor Anat, we, we will feature you yeah. also. Pupunta kami ng Vietnam, <laughs> Cambodia. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, pag po kayong aalis at huwag kayong bibitaw, babalik ang Lighthouse Cafe. Kindness at kabaitan, yan ang topic natin ngayon. Pero kids, paano kung hindi naging mabait sa'yo ang pakikitungo ng isang tao? Dapat ba mabait pa rin tayo sa kanila? Ano sa tingin mo, Sebi? 
Opo, kasi dapat suklian natin ng kabutihan ang kahit na anong ginawa sa atin ng ating kapwa para ganun din ang nila sa atin. Tama ka dun, Sevi. Ang kabaitan ay laging nasusuklian ng kabaitan din. So remember kids, always read your Bible and pray every day dahil dito natin nalalaman ang tunay na pagmamahal ni Jesus sa atin. Kindness pleases God! If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. So, merong appreciation. Who would hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope? Who would? The house. Correct? Tama ba? Because Christ has done his part. So, we need to come before God today. And ready ourselves. Just look at the rejoicing of the hope. Amen? Kindness at kabaitan, yan ang topic natin ngayon. Pero kids, paano kung hindi naging mabait sa iyo ang pakikitungo ng isang tao? Dapat ba mabait pa rin tayo sa kanila? Ano sa tingin mo, Sebi? Opo, kasi dapat suklian natin ng kabutihan ang kahit na anong ginawa sa atin ng ating kapwa para ganun din ang gawin nila sa atin. Tama ka dun, Sebi. Ang kabaitan ay laging nasusuklian ng kabaitan din. So remember kids, always read your Bible and pray every day dahil dito natin nalalaman ang tunay na pagmamahal ni Jesus sa atin. Kindness pleases God! Mga usaping in, mga paksang trending. Mga talakayang may kabuluhan. Lifestyle at kulturang sariling atin. Buhay Pinoy, pag-usapan natin dito sa... Espresso, Espresso Self! Self. Ayon sa Philippine Star, Filipino kids are the second most vulnerable to online threats globally. Yan ay ayon sa isang pag-aaral na ginawa ng Surfshark. Ito ay vulnerability sa mga online risks gaya ng cyberbullying, phishing, and even hacking. At ito ay nakuha nga sa aggregated data ng Surfshark na mula sa FBI's Internet Crime Report mula 2015 hanggang 2020 and DQ Institute's Child Online Safety Index. Mm -hmm. At dagdag pa nga dyan sa data na yan, Gabby, ay out of, um, sabi dyan, 6 out of 10 children na may edad 8 to 12 ay nai-expose sa ganitong mga cyber risks online. At nakakalungkot ang balitang na yan, Gabby, lalo pa online na ang mood sa pag-aaral nitong, um, lalo na nitong pandemya, no? At sa Pilipinas ay ki, um, kilalang social media capital yes. sa buong mundo. Kaya't mas malaki ang exposure ng ating mga kabataan sa cybercrime. Tama yan, uh, Maika, Erica, no? It's a clear and uh, present uh, threat sa atin. Kaya naman ngayong gabi ay makakapanayam natin ang representatives mula sa Honor 1000 Movement, Inc., upang talakayin ang online safety. So, welcome back to Lighthouse Cafe, Miss Flo. Magandang araw po. Yeah, welcome po. 
having me again, our <laughs> organization. Thank you. Yes, it's always a pleasure, Miss Flo. And of course, um, for the benefit of our viewers, Siguro, can you just give a brief background on what we're doing on this uh, Honor 1000 movement? Yes, so again, no, we are Honor 1000 movement. We are a non-profit organization that um, promotes um, child protection. At lalo na nga, like what you mentioned earlier, no? lalo na ngayong um, online na ang mga classes, mm -hmm. tumaas ang cases talaga ng child exploitation online sa ating bansa. And speaking of exploitation, Ms. Flo, uh, siguro hindi ako as a parent, uh, America, no, I can relate to it. 8 to, uh, I think, 12 years old. Is, I mean, 8 mm -hmm, to 10 years old. Yes. No? So right there, yung age group ng um, aking uh, napakapoging anak. No? Yes. <laughs> Pero mm -hmm. I would think ng problem lang ng parents usually is yung time sa, sa screen, yung extended mm -hmm. period na nakatutok sa mga uh, laptops. Pero ito, nakakashock, no? meron palang mga exploitation, yeah. meron palang mga um, kung ano -ano, mga crimes and cyber, even cyberbullying. No? So can you just explain more about um, how real this um, risk and this threat is, Ms. Flo? Yes. Um, so i just like to share no, na before pandemic, before the lockdowns of our schools, our organization, we would go to public schools in Metro Manila, in other regions as well. Mm -hmm. And we would teach about online safety to grades 5 and 6 students. And what's striking about this experience, even before pandemic, um, in every class, in every section, meron nang magshishare sa amin, a number of students would share that, one, um, minumura sila online, mm -hmm. Two, um, strangers chatting with them, asking for their pictures, asking for their naked pictures, mm. asking to meet up, um, and lalo na kapag yung mga nagre-rent ng computer sa mga computer shops, mm. yung mga may magpa-pop up na pornographic mm. content. So yung easy accessibility of those kind of contents sa mga grade 5 and 6 students. And like what you mentioned, no, um, UNICEF, they also conducted a study that 11 years old, this is the average age of children lured into um, online exploitation of children. And actually, sa bansa natin, um, meron nang nabiktima na 2-month-old baby pushed wow. into exploitation by by mm. the own parents. So this is a very ano, re real mm. issue in our country. Lalo na um, the stories I shared are pre-pandemic. no. So mm -hmm. lalo na ngayon na nag-shift nga into online classes. Um, just now, no, um, re this past month, we started going into communities again, public schools again. And um, sa Region 3, nag start na sila ng face-to-face -face classes. And isang observation ng public school teachers ay because there was easy access sa pornographic contents during the online classes, mm. tumaas ang harassment reports mm. sa mga schools. Mm. Wow, totoo yan, Gabi, so, no? Yes. Mm. Yes, po, Miss. Oh, sige, po, go ahead po, Miss Flo. So, meron siyang, ano, no, um, hindi lamang online exploitation of our children, mm. which, idagdag ko lang, no, na, we, since 2016, we remain to be number one. Mm. Number mm. one producer of um, pornographic contents na kung saan mga kabataang Pilipino ang mm -hmm. sinifeature doon sa contents na yon And hindi mo talaga maiiwasan na hindi lang online mangyayari. Magkakaroon siya ng direct relation or direct mm -hmm. effect on physical. Mm -hmm. Tulad nga nang nabanggit ko na sa schools, mm -hmm. tumaas yung issue ng or reports of harassment mm -hmm. among the students themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, opo. Ayun, very ano, important yung sinabi ni Ms. Flo Gabi na 
easy accessibility no kasi lalo na sa ating mga kabataan yun talagang yung curiosity na mm -hmm. tapos yung yun nga isang click mo lang pwede nang marami ng um, lumabas mm -hmm. or even yung mga viruses ngayon ganun na rin and actually even nga sa Facebook pa lang eh, pag nakita mo yung feed, minsan pag may isang nag-share, yun ay nagiging trend mm -hmm. sa feed mo. So, imbes na parang itatry mo siyang iwasan, forever na siya nandun. And mm -hmm. I think, yun nga yung delikado sa ating mga kabataan. Kasi parang, ko ano yung nakita nila, it stays mm -hmm. in them forever. So, um, nabanggit mo na, Miss Flo, yung um, during the pandemic, no, na uh, yun nga yung dahil naging online classes na, mas naging explode exposed po sila dito sa social media. So, ano, ano pa po ba yung ibang problems po na kinaharap po ng ating mga kabataan dahil mas na-exposed po sila dito po sa social media, sa internet, and even sa online classes nga po nila? Just, ano, no. again, before pandemic, some statistics, no? Um, according to DepEd, um, 3 out of 10 teenagers chat with online strangers. 50% um, or 5 out of 10 teenagers have public social media accounts. 2 out of 10 teenagers add online, stranger, online strangers in social media. Again, um, these are pre-pandemic statistics. And during the pandemic, the first year of the lockdown ay tumaas, nag-triple itong mga statistics na to. So, showing to us na talagang with the onset of um, online classes sa ating bansa, um, hindi na nabantayan yung mga mm. bata sa paggamit ng internet. Yeah. Um, during the lockdown also, or during this past year, we've been talking to, we continued to talk to public school teachers, no? At uh, isa sa mga problemang lagi nilang sinishare ay una, um, hindi na nagpapasa ng mga modules or assignments yung mga bata kasi nga nahuhook, nahuhook sa online games yeah. or nahuhook na lang sa social media. At isa sa serious issue din na kinaharap natin, before pandemic, children were lured into exploitation. Um, that's before pandemic. During pandemic, um, children themselves sila na mismo nagbebenta ng mga um, naked pictures nila, naked videos nila, thinking it doesn't harm them kasi online naman. And they're earning extra money from it. So that's why we never stop doing our work in raising awareness, changing the mindset of our um, youth na hindi totoong walang epekto sa kanila. Merong epekto sa kanila yung um, pagpo-post or pagbebenta ng mga malalaswang pictures and videos. Yes, and then, uh, I think, um, Erika, Ms. Flo, we, we've seen some news din, no? Ngayon kumakalat na ito na uh, even yung mga uh, teenagers natin, yung mga ba batang uh, babae natin especially would be um, selling some of their uh, pictures, no? Uh, because nga may, may reward, may, may nakukuha sila mm -hmm. mga uh, yes. pera. Um, you talked about, uh, clearly, medyo malaking problema po ito, Ms. Flo. No? You talked about the public school teachers, about the parents. Ano na po ngayon yung magagawa? Ano yung may tutulong natin? Kasi clearly, this is going, you know, siguro um, out of hand na rin, no? Medyo nahihirapa po tayong kontrolin. And for some parents, um, and some kids, maybe hindi sila nag-open up din, no? We don't know what's yeah. really happening dahil mm -hmm. uh, somehow kinatago rin ang mga anak natin. What can each one of us do to help? Yes, very important ang role ng parents, teachers, mm -hmm. and even kung sino man ang guardian, no? Or trusted adults ng mga bata. It's very important for them, one, to have a trusted adult mm -hmm. na masusumbungan nila or masasabihan nila because most of the time hindi sila nagsishare eh mm. hindi sila magsasabi hangga't hindi mo sila bigyan ng chance or ng pagkakataon na magsabi or mag-share na kanilang experience i just want to share also um, there was another NGO who approached us kasi nga nakikita niya na nagkakaroon na ng 
problema sa community nila about online sexual exploitation of children and we gave we gave the group resources, videos and as a result of um so siya yung lumapit sa amin she shared it with the parents sa kanilang community mm. and as a result two children were um rescued from abuse and it simply took these two parents from the training session, two parents um, talk to their kids mm. kung kamusta sila at kung may nararanasan ba silang pang-aabuso mm. and the uh, two children easily shared about their experience and they were rescued from that situation. Mm. So, guidance of the parents or guardian is definitely important um, simpleng pangangamusta, teaching them what information should be posted and not shared online, mm -hmm. um, limiting or setting up rules in the family in terms mm -hmm. of use of gadget or use of the internet. Mm -hmm. And again, very important talaga yung, of course, relationship ng family dito sa um, pag- laban sa isyu na ito and pagprotect sa ating mga kabataan. Mm, yeah, napakaganda po ng mga naibahagi niya po no Miss Flo and there pa naalala ko yung previous episode natin Gabi kasi we also focused yun talagang quality time ng parents with their children kasi doon talaga yung nagsa-start na once they become open to their parents mas nagiging um komportable din sila to share, lalo na yung mga ganitong klaseng information na imbis matakot, sila mm. sa kanila mismo pupunta yung mga parents. So, siguro Miss Flo, aside po dito sa, syempre po sa mga parents, um, teachers and siguro po even churches would like to partner with Honor 1000 yes. po in, in what you do. So, any message po to them or yet po to, to our viewers po? Yes. Um, we... We in Honor 1000 Movement believe that, of course, lalo na nitong pandemic, maraming naitulong sa atin ang internet, ang technology, mm -hmm. and we're not saying that it's bad. Um, marami siyang magandang tulong at yes. nadudulot sa atin. Um, but we need to help each other to use it to para um, maging mabubuting <laughs> citizens of our country and um, kami sa Honor 1000 movement, one of our our heart really is um, to honor to honor God mm. um, we believe that if we if Filipinos genuinely honor God and we all believe na lahat tayo ay made in His image um, walang pang-aabuso na mangyayari Mm -hmm. And instead, there will be respect and honoring of one another. And in our awareness campaign, we also share that. Because that's really the heart of our message in Honor 1000 Movement. And kami po sa Honor 1000 Movement, we're very willing to help. We go to communities, we go to public schools, and we even work with um, local um LGUs, our local mm -hmm. leaders, to share whatever knowledge we have about this issue para we can help one another in fighting online sexual exploitation of children in, so that we can protect our children. Mm, yeah, very well said. Thank you very much po, Miss Flo, na and sa Honor 1000 pa, dito po sa inyong ginagawa, lalo na para sa ating mga kabataan. So, I think hindi naluluma, Gabi, yung think before you click. Mm. no. So, very important talaga yeah. yun na, well, true na, yun nga, the internet has done um, many advantages, lalo na sa atin, naging, lalo na ngayong pandemic, no? it's also a way of communication sa bawat isa. Pero, kailangan din, alam din natin talaga yung limits natin, or kung hanggang sa lang tayo dapat. Yes, very well said, America. With the ease of access to information, also is the increase sa vulnerability ng atin po mga kabataan. So let's be vigilant and let's be proactive sa atin po ng pagprotekta sa kanila. For more on this, pakinggan po natin si Bishop Ruben Nabante sa Hebrews pagkatapos lamang po ng ilang po mga reminders.
kindness at kabaitan. Yan ang topic natin ngayon. Pero kids, paano kung hindi naging mabait sa'yo ang pakikitungo ng isang tao? Dapat ba mabait pa rin tayo sa kanila? Ano sa tingin mo, Sebi? Opo! Kasi dapat suklian natin ng kabutihan ang kahit na anong ginawa sa atin ng ating kapwa para ganun din ang gawin nila sa atin. Tama ka dun, Sebi. Ang kabaitan ay laging nasusuklian ng kabaitan din. So remember kids, always read your Bible and pray every day dahil dito natin nalalaman ang tunay na pagmamahal ni Jesus sa atin. Kindness pleases God! If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. So, merong appreciation. Who would hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope? Who would? The house. Correct? Tama ba? Because Christ has done his part. So, we need to come before God today. And ready ourselves. Just look at the rejoicing of the hope. Amen? Ngayong buwan ng Kunyo ay tinaguri ang National Kidney Month. At alam naman natin ang ating mga kidneys, ang ating mga bato ay kailangan-kailangan ng ating katawan para mapagpatuloy na tayo ay malusog. Kaya ngayong National Kidney Month ay pag-uusapan natin kung ano-ano nga ba ang mga red flags and symptoms ng kidney problems at paano nga ba natin ito mapapanatiling malusog. So kasama natin dito sa Health Talks, Siyempre, none other than Dr. Aika Isidro. Welcome po to Lighthouse Cafe again, Dr. Aika. Hi, Tonette. Good evening. At sa lahat na nanonood ng Health Talks. At dito na naman ako, i-invite ninyo. Maraming salamat. Yes, of course, Dr. Aika, dahil siyempre kayo po ay isang nephrologist. So, kayo talaga ang pinaka-perfect to discuss ito pong ating ano, no, um, kidney. So, ang alam ko po, ang kidneys or renal diseases ay top 7 po no, sa pa, um, parang leading causes ng pagkamatay ng mga Pilipino. So ano po ba yung mga common um, kidney problems uh, sa atin bilang mga Pinoy, Dok? Oo. Bago natin pag-usapan yung common kidney problems, Tonet, no? So ang kidneys na, few background lang sa ating kidneys, no? So ang kidneys, yung ating mga bato sa Tagalog, no? Siya ay kid... Uh, bean-shaped organ na nakalagay sa ating balakang or sa flank area. And two major roles niyan sa ating katawan. Unang-una, alam naman natin siya ang gumagawa ng urine or ang ihi ng isang tao. Pangalawa, filtration. Sinasala niya ang mga dumi or toxic na waste sa ating katawan. So kapag merong disturbance sa dalawang major function na ito ng ating kidney, doon na umuusbong o oh, ang term na tinatawag natin na chronic kidney disease or sa layman, kidney failure. No? So ito yung pinaka-common ngayon na nabanggit mo nga no, na kasama siya sa top 10 or sabi mo nga top 7 na cause of mortality among Filipinos. No? Yun ang chronic kidney disease. Mm-hmm. So, ano po, no, very important po talaga sa, of course, sa ating katawan ang uh, kidney sa toy. Madalas hindi siya, hindi siya ganun masyadong uh, napapansin po, ano. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, ang kidney so, sa ano eh, siya ang ating parang end organ damage na siya. So, kumbaga, siya ang sumasalo ng lahat. So, 
kapag komplikado na yung pasyente, doon lang napapansin yung yung kidneys. And very important to net sa tingin ko is to know yung mga risk factors ng yeah. chronic kidney disease. When we talk about risk factors, so net nandiyan yung sino ba ang mga prone o sino ba yung at risk of having chronic kidney disease. If we talk about age group, to net, no? so very common na sa fifth to sixth decade of life ang mga pasyente natin na merong chronic kidney disease. Dahil nga sabi ko, end organ damage na. Uh, ang, ang kidney disease. So, karaniwan, nandun na sa latter phase of um, of life. Pangalawa, um, yung mga lifestyle diseases na tinatawag natin. Ano ba yung mga lifestyle diseases natin? Diabetes, hypertension, no? um, obesity, yun yung mga common na lifestyle diseases. And meron ngang um, isang study, noong 2014 pa ito, pero it still holds true today, na ang leading cause of chronic kidney disease among Filipinos remains to be diabetes. No? Mm. If um, hindi ako nagkakamali, around 44% no? o majority pa rin uh, ng, ng common cause ng CKD, diabetes, pumapangalawa doon is yung hypertension. So sa mga mm. patients na diabetic and hypertensive, bilang ka ng ilang years um, from when they, they have been diagnosed, dapat nagmo-monitor na sila ng kanilang kidney function. Mm. So, ano po no tama uh, Dr. to recap lang uh, for those na adults natin pag tungtong ng 50 years old, 60 years old, kailangan monitor na natin yung ating mga kidneys tama po no. And of course, para sa mga ano kasama nga po natin na or kakilala natin na may diabetes or hypertension, yun nga po sabi niyo dapat um monitor na rin. So, ano po ba yung dapat natin i-monitor, Doc, mga symptoms that we uh, could watch out for? Po? No. Actually, ang chronic kidney disease, ang early stages of chronic kidney disease, nakakagulat pero walang symptoms, walang symptomas, wala kang mararamdaman na panghihina o pagkonti ng ihi. Kasi simply because um, yung mga red flags na hinahanap natin, nakikita lamang sila sa mga advanced stages na. And if we talk about red flags, again, we go back dun sa functions ng ating kidney, no? na gumagawa ng urine at nag-filter ng toxic waste sa katawan. So kapag nagde-deteriorate na yung kidney function, kumakaunti na yung ihi ng pasyente, nandyan, makikita nyo na may mga pasyente tayong nagmamanas. No? So nag accumulate yung fluid sa dependent areas of the body, like sa paa. No? Pangalawa, makakarana sila ng generalized weakness or easy fatigability. So, andyan yung mga pasyente na parang umaga pa lang, feeling nila pagod na sila. Simply because, hindi na nagagawa ng kidneys natin ang function of filtration. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya na nasasala yung mga lason sa katawan at nananatili yung lason sa kanilang mga dugo. Kaya, parang lagi silang pagod, walang ganang kumain, naduduwal, interrupted ang kanilang sleep pattern no at may mga ibang pasyente na may advanced no stage ng CKD meron ang mga signs of congestive heart failure ibig sabihin hindi lang sa um, extremities nag-accumulate yung fluid ganun na din sa puso at sa kanilang baga kaya meron silang nararamdaman na paghingal no ang madaling ubuhin o pag umakyat lang ng stairs, parang ilang steps lang, pagod na. So these are red flags na sabi mo nga, no? but these are symptoms sa advanced stage na ng chronic kidney disease. Pero meron tayong mga laboratory findings, no? na basic laboratory findings na maaari natin gawin para malaman natin kung meron tayong CKD. Ang sa mga lay forum nga na ginagawa namin to net no kasi sa mga RHU sa mga health center meron yang urinalysis no tama very basic yun sa mga RHU for us nephrologists it's a very powerful tool no to screen CKD kasi sa urinalysis sa simple urinalysis makikita namin kung merong protein sa urine or proteinuria and ang proteinuria o ang protein sa ihi No? It's a very early sign na merong kidney problem yung pasyente. No? Pangalawang laboratory tool na nire-request ng nephrologist is creatinine. No? So it's a blood test 
na pwede naming i-request para makita namin kung ano ang function no, ng ating kidneys. Kapag pataas ng pataas yung creatinine, ibig sabihin pa-deteriorate ng pa-deteriorate yung function ng kidney at pa-fail ng pa-fail yung kidney niya, probably requiring hemodialysis later on. Pangatlo to net, yung kidney ultrasound. So basically, just to get a picture of your kidney, kung meron bang kidney stone or bato, kung meron bang cyst or may bukol sa kidneys, o kung malaki ba yung prostate sa lalaki, no? nakikita namin sa ultrasound. So these three tests, very basic test for us nephrologists, ma maaari namin malaman kung merong sakit sa kidney yung patient. Mm -mm. So early on pa lang po, no? uh, tama doc, Aika, kasi yung nabanggit niyo po ng symptoms or red flags, yung yun nga po yung pag pangihina, pamamanas, sabi nyo nga po advanced yeah. stages na yan. Pero if we can access yun nga po yung services sa mga health centers, lalo na yung urinalysis, um, urinalysis na banggit niyo po, tsaka creatinine, um, yun na po tama yung talagang unang-unang pwede nating ma-monitor na agad yung health ng ating kidney. So, napakagandang, ano po niyan, reminder, kasi marami pong Pinoy natatakot to, to oh. get, di ba po, to get tested. Ayan. So, paano naman? Complicated yung mga test. Actually, hindi. Urinalysis nga lang, no? Meron ka ng, um, kumbaga, background kung ano ang condition ng iyong kidneys. Mm -mm. So, paano naman po natin mapapanatiling healthy, Doc, ang ating mga bato? Uh, some practical tips po uh, for taking care of our kidneys. Oo. So sa sa mga um, kidney celebration namin, meron kami ang tinatawag na eight golden rules no, for kidney health. Favorite ng mga nephrologists yan ng mga infographics. Number one is keep active. No? Dapat physically fit ka. No, yan, maging aktibo. So, ano ba ang pagiging aktibo? No? 30 minutes of any physical activity per day. Kung hindi kaya ng 7 days, sinasabi namin sa patient, kahit 5 days a week lang. Basta, keep active, keep moving. No? Pangalawa, siyempre yung mga bisyo, like smoking. No? Kasi ang smoking, hindi lang siya nakakasama sa baga. Nakakasama rin siya sa mga blood vessels or dinadalo niya ng dugo. No? So kapag meron siyang effect sa sa vessels o sa hypertension, asahan mo no, tatamaan din yan ang kidneys, no? Pangatlo, is keep hydration. Keep hydrated, no? So adequate hydration or tamang dami ng pag-inom ng tubig per day. So 6 to 8 glasses of water per day for the general population. So syempre may mga restrictions sa mga patients na na mga advanced Na, na merong sakit sa kidney, usually nire-restrict namin yung fluid. O kung merong mga heart problem, nire-restrict namin yung fluid. Pero for the general population, we advise 6 to 8 glasses of water per day. No? Pang-apat, syempre know your risk. No? So dapat alam mo kung anong blood pressure mo, kung normal ba siya. So at least, um, dapat mag-check tayo ng blood pressure once in a while or ang pinaka-minimum nga once a year. Para alam mo lang kung ano yung baseline na blood pressure mo. Pang lima, no? so diabetes, sabi nga, isa siya sa common or, or major cause ng chronic kidney disease. Eh, dapat alam mo kung diabetic ka. So for patients na merong family history or may mga symptoms of diabetes, we recommend getting a fasting blood sugar or yun yung test para sa dia diab diabetes at least once a year. No? Pang anim, no? So there are medications na mga naririnig natin sa radyo no, na hindi pa sumasailalim sa isang mahusay na pag-aaral or clinical trials. No? Karaniwan dyan yung mga herbal medications. At sa pag-aaral ng mga ibang doktor, meron siyang long-term effect o tubular damage na sisira na yung tubo ng kidneys natin. At later on, no, nakakadulot din ng chronic kidney disease. So sinasabi ko sa patient ko, basta hindi advice ng inyong medical doctor, sinabi lang ng kapitbahay mo, narinig mo lang sa radyo, ask your doctor first kung maaari mo siyang ibigin. No? Um, ano pa ba? Seventh, no? know your family history. No? So dapat, alam mo kung ano yung risk mo. Kung yung nanay or tatay mo is diabetic, baka meron kang strong family history of diabetes, you have to know your risk and you have to get 
your test immediately. No? At pang walo, siyempre, nutrition. Alam na alam mo yan. Ako, Antoinette, no? So, um, good eating habits, no? healthy food, and know your target weight. Kasi may mga studies din ng obesity or pagiging overweight and nakakasama sa kidneys. So, basically, Antoinette, yun yung eight Four yeah. rules, no, to have a, a healthy, no, kidneys. Yes, at napaka practical po nung walong yon. So kung hindi po na sulat na ilista na ating viewers, you can always check it sa website, no, ng especially siguro po ng DOH um, para mabalikan, especially now na ating um, National Kidney Month. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Dok Aika. Alam ko, napakalawak pa na usapin itong tungkol sa ating kidneys. Pero, of course, Hello. lahat ng ating ginagawa, sabi nga po sa First Corinthians 1031, everything that we do, whether we eat or drink, lahat yan we should do um, for the glory of God. Ah, no? So, yeah, more on yeah, this po yeah. sa mga biblical uh, principles natin sa kasunod po um, with Bishop Ruben in Hebrews. Yeah. Welcome po sa ating Hebrews. Ito ang segment sa ating Lighthouse Cafe na naglalayo na bigandaan po sa ating mga pinag-uusapan ang mga katuruan sa salita ng Diyos. Maganda ang mga pinag-usapan natin ngayon. No? Lalo na ang impact ng mga subjects na ito sa mga kabataan. Now, let me just go sa 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 14 to 17. Ito po ay bilin ni Apostle Paul sa isang kabataan no? na si Timothy. Ito ang sabi niya, Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Ang sabi ni Paul sa kanya, magpatuloy ka sa mga bagay na iyong natutunan ano po, at nabig, nagbigay sa iyo ng katatagan. No? At ang sabi niya, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Ang kahalagahan ng salita ng Diyos. At ang sabi, the holy scriptures which make you wise unto salvation. Alam niyo po, eh, wala na pong ibang nagbibigay ng karunungan sa atin upang tayo ay makahulagpos, makawala, ano po, upang malagpasan natin, upang magkaroon tayo ng kaligtasan, hindi lang sa kasalanan at sa kapahamakan, kundi sa mga pang-araw-araw, ano po, na mga hinaharap natin. Paano tayo nakakaahon sa mga iyon? Okay? At ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, ang sabi niya patungkol sa salita ng Diyos, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Kapakinabangan. Ang pinag-uusapan po dito ay kung paanong malaki ang pakinabang natin sa salita ng Diyos. Okay? Anong pakinabang? Well, unang-una, ang sabi ay eh, profitable daw ang salita ng Diyos sa doctrine. Okay? Hindi lang yan sa reproof. Hindi lang yan sa correction. O at hindi lang yan sa instruction. So, apat na areas ang pakinabang ng salita ng Diyos, the Word of God, sa atin at lalo na sa mga kabataan. Kaya mahalaga po ang pagtuturo sa kanila. For example, ano ba yung doctrine? Doctrine tells us what is right. Okay? Ano ang tama? Yan ay binibigay sa atin mula sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Halimbawa, ano ba ang tam- tama tungkol sa Diyos? Ano ba ang tama tungkol sa tao? Ano ba ang tama tungkol sa kasalanan? Ano ba ang tama sa mga topic? We need to know what is right. Ano po? At hindi lang yan. The Bible also gives profit para sa atin sa bagay na maalaman natin what is not right. Ano po? Abay, mahalaga yan. Na maalaman, lalo na ng mga bata, ano ang hindi tama. E minsan alam natin ng tama. Ano po? Yung kaparaan na naman natin ay hindi tama. Ay malaking bagay yan sa mga kabataan. And then ang sinasabi, Malaking kapakinabangan din para sa atin ang salita ng Diyos sa bagay na maalaman natin ang how to do right. Yun ang correction. Pag nagko-correct po tayo ng kahit sino, kinukorek natin ng bata. 
kinokorek natin. Kahit na anong edad, ano po, abay, ang ginagawa po natin ay tinuturuan sila how to do right. At mayroon pang isa na binibigay sa atin ng salita ng Diyos. Ang sabi ay instruction. Ano naman ang instruction? Well, in simple terms, ang instruction po ay binibigyan tayo ng kamalayan o karunungan on how to stay right. Ano po? Eh kahit alam natin ang tama, alam natin ang hindi tama, alam natin kung paano gumawa ng tama, pero hindi naman natin alam kung paano manatiling tama, lalo na sa kalagitnaan ng mga hinaharap natin kabigatan, problema, mga challenges sa buhay, pandemya kaya. Okay? Sa pagbabago ng administrasyon, ano po, eh, sa ating bansa, alamin natin ang tama na sinasabi sa banal na kusulatan. Ang hindi tama na kinakailangan ay eh, maging, maging aware po tayo. And how to do right kahit na all others would do wrong. And then, of course, how to stay right whatever time, whatever situation, in whatever circumstance we are in. At kaya mayroon tayong ganitong pag-uusap sa Lighthouse Cafe. Kaya napakaganda po. Sana ang mga bagay na ito'y nabigay sa atin ng magandang kamalayan. God bless you all. GCTV is a non-profit television network that runs 7 days a week, 24 hours per day. Here in GCTV, we partner with other Christian organizations to bring God's Word right to the very homes of everyone. At ayan na naman tayo para sabihin napakabilis ng oras natin <laughs> sa ating Lighthouse Cafe. Pero alam mo, napakaganda ng ating pag-uusap. Ano? Para, para sa akin, ano? at sana yung nakapagbigay ito ng magandang kamalayan sa lahat ng ating mga kaagapay. Mm-hmm. At napakaganda po ng mga ginagawa po ng ating mga guests no, for today, lalo na para sa ating mga kabataan. Kaya nagpapasalamat po kami sa Awana Philippines and sa Honor 1000 Movement. Ayan, and of course, we also thank Doc Aika Isidro, no, yung pong ating um, resident uh, nephrologist uh, na, sa ating health talks. So, kung na-miss po ang ating episode ngayon or hindi nyo po natapos or you want to watch our previous episodes, you can always watch a replay sa atin pong Facebook and YouTube channel. Sinapan nyo lamang po ang Lighthouse BBC at Great Commission TV. And of course, you can also download Lighthouse Spectrum. Yan po ay libre sa Google Play Store and the App Store. Ayan, that's great. Malamig na yung kape ko. Kanyo na mainit ito eh. <laughs> but join us again on Monday night next week. Ano po? 8.30 for another live episode ng Lighthouse Cafe. Where, Where good talks happen. happen.